Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18.0.1 has been out for over a week at this point and iOS 18.1 beta 6 or public beta 3 has been out for a few days. We have even more features to talk about since the iOS 18.1 beta 6 is out what's new video and we'll also talk about the overall experience. I've been using the beta full time on my 16 Pro Max and we'll also talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll where at the time of this video there's over 25,000 votes and 270 two comments. We'll take a look at some of those comments toward the end of the video, so be sure to stick around for that. But the first thing I wanted to mention has to do with Apple Intelligence. The other day I did a video on all the first features coming with Apple Intelligence and with iOS 18.1. However, there's quite a few features that are not coming right away, and I wasn't aware if many people were familiar with this. Some people thought they were all coming at once, but the major features that are left out of the initial release are Genmoji and Image Playground. Also the redesigned mail app, Siri 2.0 and chat GPT integration. Also additional countries and languages are all going to roll out through the end of this year and into next year. And it may take a couple years to get all of the features Apple has initially planned. So this is something that's going to be sort of a slow rollout. And I just wanted to make you aware. But as far as new features, Apple Pay Tap to Provision is actually now available in the Dominican Republic. And what that means is if we go into the wallet app, and if you go to add a new card, go to maybe debit card or credit card, tap continue, and you can actually bring your card near it and just tap to sort of verify. Then you'll have to typically put in a number, it verifies it again, and you're good to go. So this is something that's new with iOS 18, and it looks like they've brought it out to the Dominican Republic. Now in settings, they've updated something that this was actually may have been here before, but was just recently caught and posted on Mac rumors. If we go into settings and then we go to our name at the top here, we now have the option to add email or phone number or go into an individual email account that already exists. And within this account, we can now change it to our primary email. And it says primary email address is used to receive emails from Apple. It is also visible to people you collaborate and share documents with using iCloud. So you can now leave this alone and then change it to something else. If you want to, you can also change any of the other previous email addresses you have to your primary email address back within settings. If we go to accessibility and then we go down to camera control under camera control, we now have options for controls gesture for light press and swipe. So it says press camera control lightly or do a long swipe to access extra controls. This is part of iOS 18.1 and I don't believe I've mentioned it in previous videos. So it could have been there with previous betas, but it is something new. If you have camera control with an iPhone 16, if we go into battery, wait for it to load and we'll talk about battery life a little bit later, but within the actual battery usage by app section, you may see something a little bit different under show activity or show battery usage. You may see actually an update here where it talks about after you've installed an update as well as battery being used by device setup. So that's something you may or may not see. I've seen it posted online and you could have a battery setup and update section. If we go into music, Within music, maybe we'll go to a song. And if we go to share this song, so we'll go to share song under the share options. If we swipe over, we now have the option. If we go to more to share directly to TikTok, if you're using that. So you'll see there's an option here now where this wasn't here before. So if we tap on TikTok, you'll see that it actually shares it directly to TikTok with the song you've actually requested. So this is something new in iOS 18.1 beta six. Now this one is very subtle, but if you're using something that's using your camera or microphone, there's actually a new animation in the dynamic Island. So the green dot is active, letting me know the camera may be in use. If I swipe home, you'll see it just fades away. So that's sort of a new animation, very subtle, but something that is new. Also something else that's new in iOS 18.1 from previous betas is if we go into the calculator and then you go into your history, tap on it. It now actually expands from the bottom before it actually moved over from the side. So you'll see on 18.0.1, if we do the same thing, it slides over from the side on 18.1 beta six, it slides up from the bottom. So it's just a small design change, but something they have changed with iOS 18. Apple also added support for wired controllers. So if you want to use an Xbox controller wired, it will now work something discovered by Mac rumors. And also to go along with that iOS 18.0.1 seems to have fixed using wireless mics with your device via USB-C. So if you have maybe a road wireless mic like this, 
You plug it in with USB-C, it should now work properly in your camera on your iPhone. So the default camera app was having an issue with that. It seems like it's updated with this update and it's now working properly. Now, Apple also updated iCloud.com with quite a few new things this week. So let's go ahead and take a look at it on the iPad and on iCloud.com. They actually updated it with quite a few things. We now have dark mode. We can customize our background. We have iCloud calendar where it says calendar support and updated design support for Hajiri calendar and updated design across the app. We now have a shared view of the files that you're sharing with someone else. And in iCloud photos, we now have faster navigation. You can adjust the date and time or location. There's new tile options in notes. You can pin important notes and with reminders, it says create new reminder lists to keep your tasks organized and complete recurring reminders. So that's something they've updated in here that looks a little different. So in the calendar, it's just a little bit of an update and you'll see the updates all throughout the overall web page. And you can see what's new here. If you just tap the little menu in the upper right, you'll see new on iCloud and you'll see all of the information I just let you know about. As far as releases this week, well, Apple actually released Safari technology preview version 205. If we go into the website, you'll see it's available for Mac OS Sequoia and Mac OS Sonoma with the latest features and it was released on October 7th. So if you want to try that out, you can, and maybe test something you're using, maybe a web page to make sure it works properly using the latest technology. Apple also stopped signing iOS 18 this week. That means you can no longer downgrade to it iOS 17.7 is still available and iOS 18.0.1, but not iOS 18. This makes me think maybe they have iOS 18.0.2 in the works as we're expecting iOS 18.1 in just a couple weeks. But as far as the release date, based on the time that we're seeing this, I would think maybe next week we could have a small update with additional security updates and additional bug fixes. By this time last year with iOS 17, we'd already had three releases to fix a bunch of issues and then we had iOS 18.1. So it's very possible we could see some sort of update. However, so far there's no mention of this being worked on anywhere. Also iOS 18.1 RC or beta seven could release as soon as Monday. However, according to Mark Gurman, iOS 18.1 is aimed for the 28th. However, based on what we've seen before, maybe they'll have it on the 21st, but we don't really know. Apple hasn't officially let us know, but at least by the end of this month is when we can expect iOS 18.1. I personally think it would be sooner rather than later as Apple really wants to get it out, but maybe we'll see a beta seven and then an RC on the 21st with a final release on the 28th. We don't really know, but hopefully that's what they do. Now, when it comes to the overall experience, those running iOS 17.7 say it's very stable after you give it a little time to process and iOS 18.0.1 seems like it's pretty good, but it does take some time to process in the background. In fact, I had someone on Twitter or X message me and actually ask, why is it still processing in the background on their battery page? And it's been over a week. And that's because it can take one to two weeks to process in the background, depending on how you're using the phone, whether it's charged, what it's doing. And once it processes, then your battery life should improve greatly. So half of the people using it so far on the YouTube community poll have actually said that it's stable with good battery life. A couple have said it has poor battery life, but there are a few small issues with it, such as notification badges sort of sticking to different things after you've actually viewed what it's talking about. So in mail, maybe you've viewed email and it's still showing a notification badge. This is happening in phone and it seems like Apple apps are showing this. Thankfully, I haven't seen this, but I know quite a few people have. Also, some people are saying that notes is crashing for them. Thankfully, I haven't experienced that. And then music is still stopping for some. So I personally haven't seen this, at least on recent versions, but with the first version of iOS 18, I saw that music would just sort of stop randomly on its own. And then I would have to go and hit play again. I'm not sure why that is, but it seemed to happen more on CarPlay than anything else. When it comes to iOS 18.1 beta six, well, it's mostly stable or sometimes stable. I've only had a couple odd issues with it where general issues happen. My iPhone had one notification. I couldn't clear it or swipe it away. So if I had a notification here, I couldn't clear it. It wouldn't let me swipe it. In fact, the background completely disappeared. The only way to fix it was to reboot the phone. Also that fixed the issue with no notifications coming in. Some people are saying that the keyboard lag is completely gone and others are saying that their phone is staying quite warm. So if you are having an issue where it's warm, I would reboot, but it's definitely doing something in the background and causing that problem. 
As far as the overall battery life, well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. On iOS 18.1 beta 5 or beta 6, it was quite good. Beta 6 seems to have improved it greatly. So if we take a look here, We'll go to battery health. I'm at 100% with 19 cycles as this is my main phone. And you can see with coconut battery here, what it has to say. That's a Mac app that you actually plug your phone into your Mac to get the information. As far as my battery life, the last 10 days, you'll see yesterday I had three hours and 52 minutes of screen active time at three hours and 47 minutes of screen idle time and used about 75% of my battery today, two hours and 35 minutes in. I'm down to 71%. So in general, I'm getting through the day with about 50% left, 40% left. That's much better than what I had before. Now, this isn't super light usage, but it is probably average or medium usage. And it seems to be doing much better than previous versions for me. When it comes to iOS 18.0.1, thanks to Cameron for sending in his device. And on an iPhone 16 Pro Max with 100% battery health, you'll see he had five hours and 19 minutes of screen active time, four hours and 20 minutes of screen idle time, and has a little bit over 30% left. So in general, I think that's pretty good. It's getting most people through the day and many people are experiencing even better battery life than that. When it comes to overall performance, performance seems to be pretty good, especially on the latest beta. Everything's nice and smooth and that includes the iPhone 11. So this has beta six or public beta three on it. So if we go to the app library and scroll, it's nice and smooth. If we go back out, go into maybe music, it loads nice and fast. Maybe we go over to something else, open the camera here. You'll see it is pretty fast on both devices. In fact, the iPhone 11 may have been quicker there. So in general, it seems to be a much better experience. Some people are still having a little bit of lag here and there, but it's pretty good, especially for a beta. When it comes to the overall heat, well, the heat of the device is quite good on the 16 Pro Max. It's nice and cool right now, even though it's been on for a little bit. And the same is true on the iPhone 11. But let's take a look at both 15 or 16 Pro Maxes rather, and see what they're doing as far as the overall thermals. On the 16 Pro Max with iOS 18.1 beta 6, we have about 31.5 degrees Celsius. With iOS 18.0.1 on a 16 Pro Max, we have about 28 degrees Celsius. So it's staying nice and cool, no issues whatsoever. Unless you're playing intensive games, it seems to be pretty good. However, I was recording outside doing comparison videos and in about 75 degree heat or maybe 80 degrees Fahrenheit, I actually had the phone pull the screen brightness down. So the phone did get hot enough while recording a qu quite a bit of video from the front camera, the rear camera and everything else that it pulled the actual screen down where the S24 Ultra I was comparing it with didn't have that issue. And actually the 16 plus didn't either. So that's something I hadn't seen before. Maybe I just used it more than the other devices. When it comes to overall benchmarks, let's take a look at those. From left to right, we have iOS 18.0.1 on a 16 Pro Max. In the middle, the iPhone 11 with iOS 18.1 public beta three, and on the right, iOS 18.1 beta six on the 16 Pro Max. iOS 18.0.1 definitely has the highest scores here, about a hundred higher for both single and multi-core than the iOS 18.1 version of the same phone. I think it's well within the margin of error and both seem to be performing quite well. Now, as far as your experience, let's take a look at some of the comments. Shepard Nedman's III8093 said, well, I've been running iOS 18.0.1 for about a week now on my iPhone SE 2002. And at first it seemed a little bit glitchy, but it seems to be working out all of the kinks and such. So I don't know that I have much to complain about. It has condensed most of what I have on my storage and made my phone operate more efficiently and smoothly and faster. So I have no complaints about it. Nice work y'all. Jeff Hubbard 3399 said staying on 17.7 .7, after reading dozens of complaints about Apple music problems on Apple community and Reddit after updating to 18 iPhone 15 pro blind Gordy said I'm on iOS 18.0.1 and everything is still performing as it should on my iPhone 15 pro battery life is as good as it can be considering my usage and everything else is going swimmingly. Hopefully with iOS 18.1, my problem with the notes app and consistency with how lines are structured will be fixed with all notes, whether it is from email or on my iPhone folders. Sean G4886 said running iOS 18.0.1 on my iPhone 14 pro loving the dark icons. Performance has been fine to fantastic. Sometimes texting stutters a bit, but overall performance has been really good and snappy. Everything is just instantaneous. Texting intelligence is vastly improved over 17 and dictation is also faster and smarter. Still getting used to the new photos, but it's fine. 
Eurotech said, iOS 18.1 Dev Beta 6 here running on my iPhone 15 Pro. So far, there have been no bugs or issues that I have encountered in my daily use. This beta has been surprisingly stable so far. And this was actually the top comment from GamerGuy3013 that said, I wish they hadn't messed with the Photos app. It has 165 likes, so I thought that was pretty significant. Tori2012 said, been on Beta 6 for a few days. Battery life is significantly better. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.0.1, one or iOS 18.1 beta six or public beta three. Well, if you haven't installed iOS 18.0.1 yet, and you're on iOS 18, I definitely would install it. It fixes some issues that it was having and also has a couple very important security updates you can see on Apple's security website. So you'll see here, there was one for media session and for passwords. So I definitely recommend upgrading to that version. And it seems better after about a week or so of processing for most people. As far as iOS 18.1 beta six, well, at this point, if you haven't installed the beta, I'd probably hold out, especially if you have a device that doesn't support Apple intelligence, but it is safe to use public beta three, but don't expect it to be perfect just yet. It's much better than the previous ones, but if you're waiting for the final one, I would wait until at least the RC version, then we'll have basically what's the public release. Then of course, we'll move on to iOS 18.2 and others. So that's pretty much everything so far in iOS 18.1 beta six and iOS 18.0.1. If you found any additional features or changes or have anything different that people haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.